Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. And the topic I'm going to speak about is probably the biggest uh, challenge that we all have, and that is overcoming chronicity and non-compliance in type 1 diabetes care. So I do not have solutions. I'm just going to share in the next few, few slides uh, some experiences, some thoughts, because there's no such thing as a curriculum that one can have in this topic that do this or don't do that. We all know why it happens. We know what can be done. Only there is some inertia in between or some ideas which are lost. And that is what I'm going to share. I just want you all to, rem for a moment, for one minute before we blame a patient or we blame a child or a caregiver, just imagine yourself taking five insulin injections a day. Just think about it. I did a program in which I myself lived for two weeks as a person with type 1 diabetes. So I used to take normal saline injections with the insulin syringe every day. I used to prick myself five times a day. I tried keeping a log. I tried to do pre and post and 3 a.m. sugars. At some times, I used to forget insulin. Sometimes I used to forget the checking. Sometimes I used to forget the logging. And every time looking at food, doing the carb counting, deciding what to eat, to have planned spontaneity when your friends are going out and you have a planned spontaneity. So if you just look at all that discrimination, having one hypoglycemic episode, if you do a simulation, Nowadays, they have these machines where you can do a simulation of what it feels like to have a hypoglycemia. Even the best controlled person would at some stage have a hypoglycemia. And if you've just once experienced what it feels like, and one would realize that it's not definitely not an easy life. And this goes on and on and on and on. It's not like one day. It is on and on, 24 by 7 and for absolutely forever. So if this is what it is, then at least can we step into those shoes and can we think about why before we end up saying that you blame problems, can we just put ourselves in those shoes for a little while and that itself will give us all our answers. I know it sounds very philosophical. I mean, it sounds like Lord Buddha or something, but I mean, there's no other way. There is no one-to-one -one science only. It's a behavioral science. And but without that, you don't get the hard science. I was blamed many times in my clinic by all the other doctors saying, you're a very soft doctor. I said, what other way is there to be? I mean, what if you have science and you have to be soft, that's the only way to marry the two to make it happen. So point being, there's no uh, right and wrong, one plus one, two, but there are things that we need to think about. We all know that in spite of awareness, in spite of education, you still get non-compliance. So it is not the rural kids, it's not the underprivileged kids, it's not the uh, people who don't understand or get education. It is highly educated, highly affording kids also who will end up becoming non-compliant, rebellious. As I was saying earlier, adolescence is an age you want to rebel against anything. Abhi, we are going to hear Dr. Meena talking about substance abuse. So, I mean, all the way from torn jeans to colored hair, you have to rebel and that one of the biggest rebellions that person with type 1 diabetes can do is I'm not going to check. I'm not going to control my sugars. I'm not I'm going to skip my insulin doses. So that comes naturally to them. But other than that, there are so many social factors. There are cultural and religious factors in homes. For example, so many of my kids have been pestering me that in this month of Ramzan is going on. They are all after me, ma'am, Rosa Rakhne Dijay, Rosa Rakhne Dijay. And I said, you're not on a CGMS, we're not on a pump, uh, and you're young yet. How do I let you do that safely? So... Um, it's such a powerful situation, religious situation around the home, that they actually feel guilty not being able to fast the way others can. So there's so many factors, psychological, personal factors, socioeconomic statuses, misconceptions, myths that people have, especially what uh, Dr. S uh, Rishi Shukla sir mentioned, that whether you're a 100 or a 300, you feel fit. A child, there's no pain. I mean, it sounds very mean to say so, but often I feel, I wish diabetes had a little pain. I mean, having no discomfort and no pain itself um, does not create proactiveness in care. Uh, people, my kids would come to me with a pimple and say, ma'am, do you know a cream that will take away this pimple, but would not come to me for a 260 sugar, because that's okay, I mean, we'll handle that later. But that pimple is a priority. There's no money for an extra strip, but there's money for a fairness cream. 
right so all these priorities get skewed and that is the misconceptions the whole social scenario so there's so many things and ultimately last is exhaustion so what makes a difference we have a wonderful champion sitting in the audience and she is nupur and she was sharing uh, with me that how she transitioned from a, she has 30 years of experience living with type 1 diabetes and how she transitioned and one day it clicked so from a rebellious girl to an absolute i will keep my hba1c 6 and my cgms flat girl so that transition happens ultimately it happened when she was ready to change not when the whole world was pestering her to change when she got self motivated when she had a whole thing that it's her choice nobody is forcing it down her throat and when she found ways of solving her problems she found a way of eating low carb she found a way of monitoring she found a way of uh, devising her own regime with insulin so that was empowering and that is when they actually do it but this is all easier said than done this is all theory and we know theoretically we all agree so i am going to just tell you three stories i have 8 minutes i'll take three only just three stories and these are real life stories from my children so please meet bhakti bhakti had type 1 diabetes at the age of 2 years of when she was 2 years old she was mostly staying in hypoglycemias because her mother was very scared of feeding her more I used to overdose her because of higher doses she was scared of a higher sugar and she had one foot shorter than the other congenitally so she had an extreme inferiority complex the family brought her up with no expectation girl child one foot shorter than the other type 1 diabetes on top of that i mean always in hypos and she was a slow learner see barely managed in school like 8th grade she was barely able to read and write in maharashtra you have to pass every child till 8th grade so she passed otherwise she would not have made it to 10th she came to us in udan when she was in 8th class and she was absolutely non compliant and the parents were frustrated they said we are at our wits end you do what this is a useless child वैसे भी कुछ नहीं हो सकता इसका जिंदगी में कुछ नहीं हो पाएगा अभी कम से कम अच्छी रही तो हम संभाल लेंगे ऑल दैट वॉज हैपन वॉट वॉज द इंटरवेंशन दैट हैपन एट उड़ान अ वेरी सिंपल थिंग वन वी स्टॉप एक्सपेक्टिंग हर टू रीड एंड राइट वी टोल्ड इट्स ओके नॉट टू हैव मार्क्स इट्स ओके नॉट टू बी एजुकेटेड नॉट एवरी चाइल्ड इज स्मार्ट ओनली वेन दे कैन रीड बुक्स एंड वी फाउंड एब्सोलूटली नॉन रीडिंग टीचिंग मेथड्स वी हैव ऑल काइंड ऑफ टीचिंग टूल्स फ्रॉम डांस टू गेम्स टू activities and she learned very well she learned so well that i have her videos teaching others now and we keep start giving her appreciation for small so we have a champion of the month every month we display then we give little cups for somebody who answers right so we planned it in such a way in like six months we gave her a lot of rewards every time there was a gathering we used to bring her up and say oh well done look bhakti has done this so all her lost self confidence came back and most important we told her you can become something which she was always told she will not so she started training as a beautician she started working with somebody just helping picking up things but today bhakti is 22 years old she is a trained beautician she earns 10000 rupees a day she contributes to her family's income last week she told me ma'am i said there was a rishta for her for wedding for a shaadi she said ma'am i'm not going to get married let me stand on my own feet till i earn 50000 rupees till then i'm not going to say yes to a boy so this was a girl who came with total frustration so this is an individual technique so can do we have the time do we have the space do we have a infrastructure a team who can actually do this for every child but these are all different stories so i just wanted to share different things that can help second story is about a boy varad he had type 1 diabetes when he was 9 years of age he's a brilliant boy he used to come with some scientific experiment he started his own youtube channel you can look for, look for it and he used to do he used to say i'll ro- uh, launch uh, you know t- uh, all these rockets and i'll be a scientist everything 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 parents were very supportive uh but very ambitious they wanted him to do well they wanted him to top in the class all that happened in 11th something happened and absolutely bad his sugars were like all over the place we were like so upset that what is happening to this boy not bothering no carb counting no diary keeping no logging and then his parents came and they said ma'am bigad gaya hai ye ho gaya hai wo ho gaya hai and then all it took was one conversation one hearing as shukla sir said not talking 
but one hearing. When we heard him out, we realized that he was under extreme stress about his future. He felt, now I have to leave home. Will I make it in life? Will I really be the scientist I'm talking about? Will the society accept me? Abhi tak I was at home. And that transition was something that stressed him so much that he was not just in anxiety, but also mild depression. And that is a time we realize that he needs professional help. We are not adequate because it was real anxiety and depression. And then we referred him to a psychiatrist who had a counseling team. So he's currently under the care of the counselor. He's off the medication now, but he's doing very well. He did his, now his entrance exams are just coming up and he's very hopeful that he will be doing very well, but he's stable under care. And we also allotted him a buddy who would keep calling him. So he needed to be uh, connected in a non-judgmental manner. Somebody who would not say, ki marks kaise aaye, padhai hui ki nahi. Somebody who would just say, hi, ye picture dekhi kya. So he needed a very non-judgmental kind of a buddy. And we gave instructions to the buddy ki koi sugar nahi puchega aur koi padhai nahi puchega. <laughs> ye do topic chhod kar, you have to talk about it. So this was needed and this boy is now doing currently very well. And last and my favorite study here, I mean, this is uh, very, uh, the reason I'm sharing and is my favorite is how a simple solution can change a life. This boy, Vishal, he was 12 years old. Day one, he was non-compliant. He came to us and sat arrogantly. Aap bollo jo bolna hai. I'm not going to do it. Like he was the epitome of non-compliance, rebellious from day one. And his eyes used to dare me. He was one boy who dared to look into my eyes and glare and say, huh. Aap kya I mean, totally challenging. And at that time, we didn't know what it would happen and nothing was working. Finally, we sent somebody, we do home visits. So we sent a few of the kids, ke ja ke mil ke aao. let's go and have a cup of tea at his place. And when our kids went, had a cup of tea at his place, they came back and they talked to his friends and cousins. We came to know his mom was Hitler, beyond Hitler. And mom was always putting him down, saying he's such a useless guy, you can't do anything in life. Mom, the boy's mom, was the one who was harassing him all the time. Jute kyun nahi rakhe, shirt kyun nahi rakha, safai kyun nahi ki, glucometer kya hai, thali kaha hai, khana kaha hai, baal aise kyun bana hai, padhai aise kyun ki hai. I mean, insulin kitna liya, sugar itne kyun hai. It was a non-stop harassment by the mother and that why he was so rebellious once he broke the television. He threw the... Uh, something and broke the television. So he was that rebellious. We thought, ki kya kare? We talked to his grandparents and we he, they lived in the same town nearby, in Aurangabad itself. And we requested them, ki, can you please invite him? Because if we tell the mother, we can't tell the mother, ki, you are a bad mother. Because that would have some other repercussions. So we knew that counseling the mother is not going to work. We found his grandparents, told him, ki, please invite him over to stay with. He went, he stayed with them. And transformation. He is like so well controlled. He is, comes regularly. Last week he called to say, can I come and volunteer on Fridays? My exams are now over. I am free. Can I come? We never imagined this Vishal who was throwing stones will ever be able to do that. So stories are plenty. My only purpose of sharing these were that no two people are alike. Each child is different. Do we have it in us to meet the challenge? It's a tall, tall challenge. But as the lady who was throwing fish into the ocean and somebody asked her that you can't save all the fish in the ocean, she said, but it makes a difference to this one. So even if we can do it for one child, I'm sure that's one life better. Thank you.